Lickitung is one of those Pokemon with an amazing move pool that is unfortunately wasted on bad stats. Once upon a time, Lickitung was one of the best Pokemon in GSCNU. In eras of GSCNU that are now past us, Lickitung was a great Pokemon. Even early in the modern metagame, Lickitung was a force to be reckoned with. It was a dangerous Pokemon that wasn't easy to KO. It's kinda weird to think that Lickitung was once top tier, because nowadays, it's almost non-existent. Lickitung isn't good in modern GSCNU. The tier is not structured in a way that favours it, and it faces a lot of competition from other normal types. Lickitung struggles to keep up in such a fast-paced metagame. When GSCNU was a slower tier, Lickitung was great, but that's an error now in the past. Lickitung only fits into very specific teams, and set teams usually aren't good. For this video, I'll do something different. I'll analyse what Lickitung does first, and then it's rise and fall. Lickitung has largely stayed the same throughout GSCNU's four metagames. Lickitung has fairly mediocre stats, but it's carried by its move pull and its typing. Lickitung is one of the few Pokemon to learn Sword Stance, the best physical boosting move in the game. It also learns Belly Drum, though that move hasn't been seen much in it historically. Lickitung is, and always has been used as a bulky setup sweeper. Lickitung uses its decent bulk and lack of weaknesses to accumulate multiple Sword Stance boosts. Normal is one of the best offensive typings in GSCNU, since the tier doesn't have many normal resists. Lickitung can run either mono normal coverage with Sword Stance, a stab move, and Rest Talk, or it can drop Sleep Talk and run Earthquake or Seismic Toss. Earthquake destroys Magnemite and deals solid damage to Sudowoodo, Graveler, and Pupitar after a boost. It also dealt with Haunter when it was allowed in the tier. Normal plus ground is an excellent attacking combo on GSCNU, though Lickitung does need to sacrifice Sleep Talk in order to run it. Without Sleep Talk, it becomes very exploitable when asleep. Body Slam or Frustration are what Lickitung uses for a normal stab. Body Slam has less power, but it has a chance to paralyze, which can cripple Pokemon like Weezing, Primeape, and Dugtrio. Body Slam makes foes like Weezing more wary of switching in. Body Slam's paralysis can also support slower setup sweepers, like Kingler. Frustration's higher power can let Lickitung 2 KO some Pokemon that avoid being 2 KO'd by Body Slam, like Octillery and Pineco. It's a good option if you want to make Lickitung more offensively potent. Lickitung's decent defensive stats make it a decent check to weaker Pokemon, like Chinchou and Dugong. It's also a decent switch into Zatu if necessary. Rest Talk also lets it absorb status moves from the likes of Porygon and Gloom. Lickitung is able to pose a decent offensive threat, given that most teams don't have normal resists. Long term, it can manage to pull off a sweep. Lickitung is annoying to KO, it has serviceable bulk, and only a single weakness. So, let's see how that all translates into the four different eras of GSCNU. Spoiler alert, they translate it to a lot of success. Lickitung was a fantastic Pokemon in the first era of GSCNU, the Mr. Mime metagame. Several people considered it to be one of the best Pokemon in the tier back then. The Mr. Mime metagame was a smaller tier than the modern metagame, since many current staples were in underuse back then. This included Wigglytuff, who would go on to be competition for Lickitung. Lickitung was difficult to 3 KO on the special side, and it could spread paralysis with Body Slam. Lickitung actually ran Curse more commonly back then, since Wigglytuff wasn't around to outclass that set. Lickitung was dangerous and difficult to consistently KO. It was the tier's premier normal type, and it was a huge threat back then. It could run its bulkier Rest Talk set, or could it go more offensive with Earthquake? It had several good answers, like Sudowoodo, Graveler, Hitmonchan, and if it dropped Earthquake, Haunter, but it was a great Pokemon. The smaller size of GSCNU really benefited Lickitung. The Mr. Mime Marrow was certainly its golden age. 
In 2018, though, things drastically changed for GSCNU. That October saw the two have a huge cheering shift, with several UU Pokemon dropping down to NU, and Mr. Mime, Haunter, and Pikachu leaving for UU. One of Lickitung's biggest competitors, Wigglytuff, was now in the tour. This is also the introduction of Pokemon like Primeape, Magmar, and Weezing to the tour, all of whom threatened Lickitung. All faces like Sudowoodo, Shuckle, Graveler, and Hitmonchan still existed too. Did that stop its success? The answer was... not really, no. Lickitung was pretty solid in the two Raichu metagames. Once again, it was a bulky setup sweeper, but this time, it ran some different sets on occasion. After Feraligator was banned, Seismic Toss became a popular option to deal with Shuckle, a rock type who didn't care about the Earthquake. Seismic Toss was guaranteed the 3 KO Shuckle because of its low HP. A lot of defensive teams relied on Shuckle to counter normal types, so Seismic Toss Lickitung could be a decent threat. The Raichu errors of GSCNU were the slowest the tier had ever been, so Lickitung fit right in. Lickitung wasn't great versus Feraligator or Poliwrath, but like, not much was. Feraligator and Poliwrath were both broken as hell. It was a good Pokemon in this era, though Wigglytuff gave it some competition, it had 4 moves slot syndrome, and it wasn't strong enough to take on the likes of Raichu reliably. Eventually, Feraligator was banned, and several months after, Raichu, Poliwrath, and Golduck were too, bringing us to the modern GSCNU metagame. Early on in the modern metagame, Lickitung was its same old self. It was bulky, it set up Sword Stance, Normal Stab, yada yada yada. Fun fact about myself, when I first started playing GSCNU in April 2020, I thought Lickitung was like, broken as hell. I legit thought Lickitung was the second best Pokemon in the tier back then. Back then, I used a Mintberry rest set with Earthquake in order to make up for how abusable rest could be without sleep talk. Those were the days. I wasn't the only fan of Lickitung at the time, as it ended up being ranked decently high on the first viability rankings. As 2020 progressed though, Lickitung started to decline. GSCNU was slowly getting more and more offensive. The Mr. Mime metagame was also quite offensive, but even it wasn't as fast paced as modern GSCNU would come to be. Lickitung also had to compete with more normal types. Wigglytuff was generally superior as a cursed normal type. Wigglytuff and Lickitung have basically identical stats, but Wigglytuff is a bit stronger. I haven't talked about Statler yet, who is even more dangerous as an Earthquake using normal type. Wigglytuff, and especially Statner, would go on to be two of the best Pokemon in the tour, leaving Lickitung in the shadows. Lickitung really didn't like how GSCNU was progressing. Its slow playstyle didn't at all mesh with the increasingly fast paced GSCNU metagame. Lickitung has its own fundamental issues. It's incredibly slow and vulnerable to spikes. It becomes much harder to bring Lickitung in when it's taking spikes chip. Speaking of spikes, or rather, the main spikes that are Pineco, it can come in on Lickitung with little fear. Pineco is not something you want having free turns, because it can set up spikes or use a rapid spin or explosion. Explosion is another big pain for Lickitung. The common Weezing and Pineco, as well as Soda Widow and Graveler, can it all explode on it. Lickitung needs to use Sleep Talk to not be a sitting duck, but then it drops Earthquake. It also must give a sword stance, because Curse is worse Wigglytuff, and Belly Drum is too hard to reliably pull off. Without Curse, Lickitung is slow, vulnerable to spikes, and explosion, and it has to worry about threats like Primeape, Magnemite, and Soda Widow. Everything is faster than it, and several common Pokemon can threaten it. GSCNU just got faster and faster in 2021 and 2022, leading Lickitung to fall off a cliff. People just realise there's better normal types to use, and Lickitung doesn't fit in with the current metagame. You only really see it on gimmicky stall teams these days as a sword stand sweeper, or I guess you could pass agility to it and then it could set a belly drum in order to sweep. I don't know. It's just inconsistent and bad. Lickitung is no longer a staple in GSCNU. Heck, it's no longer a good Pokemon.